In this example, uh, we're looking at an application of linear programming. We're given a company that is considering two different insurance plans. They have certain minimum needs that they have to have a certain amount of insurance. Here's the details of each policy. We're trying to minimize right, their premiums subject to these constraints here and here. So what you want to do is um, set up your constraint functions. You know we'll just call uh, this x and this y. Right, so this is the, uh, these are the uh, amounts of policy A and policy B. So x will represent the number of units of policy A. Y will represent the number of units of policy B. Therefore, right off the bat, we get that our cost equation is 50x plus 40y, and we're trying to minimize this. Then we've got our constraints. The first one is they have to have at least $150,000 of fire and theft insurance. That's this one, right, the first row. So however much they buy of policy A plus however much they buy of policy B has to add up to $150,000 uh, total coverage. So that one is simply 10,000x plus 15,000y, right, has to be greater than or equal to 150,000. We can set up the second one as 180,000x plus 120 thousand y has to be greater than or equal to this 2.4 million. Well, you can work with these big um, clunky things or you can realize that these are just inequalities, right? Just like an equation, you can simplify your life by dividing everything by a thousand. And then you can also decide that, hey, look, they're all divisible by five. So I can uh, reduce this down very simply to 2x plus 3y greater than or equal to 30. That's the same thing. right? Over here, you'll notice that you can take off 4. right? You can basically divide by 10,000. And then those are all divisible by 6. And now you have 3x plus 2y greater than or equal to 40. And that's as you know, reduced as they're going to get. <clears throat> now, with linear programming, um, probably the easiest thing to do is to give yourself uh, a quick graph. You, know, you want to graph these things so you can figure out uh, what your feasible region is. Then you need to find all of the corners, right? find all the points of intersection and then you take each of those points that you found and plug them into your um, cost function, the thing that you're trying to minimize. We can do this uh, by hand with graphing or we can use uh, calculators to help us graph and find intersections and things like that. We can use the simplex method or there are various online tools that will help you solve linear programming uh, without you know, any fuss or muss. Here is one such tool. Good old Microsoft Excel. It's easy, it's simple, everybody has it. Um, it works you know, on all platforms. And all you need to do is make sure that you have uh, the Excel Solver uh, add-in installed. And if you don't know if you have the solver, well, chances are you don't. If you click on the, the Data tab, it would be over here in your analysis uh, part if you have it. You can see that I don't have it yet installed, but it's very simple. Click on File, Options, go down to Add-ins because we're going to be adding something. At the very bottom, right, Excel Add-ins, click Go. Brings up this new, if you haven't already installed your analysis tool pack, you should do that because you'll use that for a lot of other things. Go ahead and click on the Solver Add-in as well. Click OK. It'll take a while, and then there's your solver. Okay, once you have that, 
then we can do what we need to do. Now this is going to seem like a lot of work and it is the first time you do it but once you have this template set up in Excel just save it and you can use it over and over again. Um, all right, I've already set this up. Now here's what you need to do. Um, up here, you can give it any label you want, but these are basically your variables, your totals, and your your limits. Okay, um, here is where you write your objective constants, right? So we knew that our objective function was we had to have um, fifty. It was fifty dollars per every you know policy A and forty dollars for every policy uh, B. And then here you need to uh, write a simple formula to basically define your total cost as this cell times this one plus this one times that one. And that's what this formula is, right? It's just B3 times, and I can show you how you do that really easily. You just say um, equals this times this plus this times that and there you go. Now the only difference between this one and this one you'll notice the dollar signs and what the dollar signs do is they lock these cells in place and the reason why I did that is because I need to do the same thing down here. right? Um, this cell needs to be the total of my first constraint. Right? It needs to be um, 10,000 times however many X's I have plus 15,000 times however many Y's I have and that's going to be the total of that constraint and then of course the way we have it set up is it has to be at least 150,000 right they need at least 150,000 of uh, this one policy. Well rather than uh, doing this typing in a, a formula of this times that blah, over and over and over again if you just take this and click on the corner and drag it um, repeats so you can see that from here down here now it's just taking these two cells and multiplying it by that which of course we don't need and then it's doing the same for these and these and you can check it very easily by just put a 1 in here and look what happens I get a 50, 1000, 180,000 right put a 1 in here and now this is 90 right it just added 15 so it's 25, 30 so it seems to work okay get rid of these again go back to the standard. Okay, now start up the solver. Again, I've already typed everything in here, but for your set objective, all you have to do is choose the cell that represents the total of your objective function, and that's this cell. Then down here, your changing variables, that's where you need to highlight your X and Y. Right, so that's just those two cells. So those those are the amounts that it can change to give you different totals for all three places. And then down here, you click on Add to add a constraint. The cell reference is the total, and in this case, it had to be greater than or equal to, and then the constraint, and then you would hit Add do it for the next one, hit OK, and they would both be right here. You can see that there's my D5, this thing right here, has to be greater than or equal to this E5, and then 6 to be greater than 6. So that's the setup. It's pretty easy. I'll put um, a link to another video from YouTube that'll walk you through it as well with another example that'll help you how to use this. If you just do Excel um, linear programming with Excel Solver, you'll find a bunch of videos. Okay, click Solve. It does all the math for you, tells you it found a solution, and it inputs everything in here, right? It changes these, and it tells you that the solution is 12 of these, 2 of these, and then here are your totals, right? So you have just enough of this, just enough of this, and here's your total cost of your premium, $680. And that's how you would do that one with Excel Solver. We could also do it by hand with the simplex method. I don't want to do that, it takes too long. Um, we could do it by hand with the graphical method, and when you only have two variables and uh, two constraints, it's a pretty easy uh, one to do graphically. You know that 
if you graph these two functions, if you solve them for y, right, you're going to have uh, y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 10. And over here, y is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 20. So they're both going to be negative slopes, right? One's going to hit at 10, one's going to hit at 20. This is negative 2 thirds, this is negative 3 halves. So you're basically going to have a line like this and a steeper line like that. The steeper line is the one that hits up here at uh, 20. And then the shallower line hits at 10. Doesn't help you. You need to know this dot there. So you got to figure out where does this hit the x-axis, i.e. you set it equal to 0 and, uh, and solve and you get um, you get the point 15 0 then you have this point up here right 0 20 and then all you have to do is is find where they intersect and and that's finding a common solution I would go back to um, you, you can use these if you want, but then now that you've got fractions, if you just use the elimination method, right? Multiply the bottom one by, let's say, um, 2. And then the top one by negative 3. It changes, but it doesn't really matter because we're we're finding solutions here. Uh, negative three gives you uh, negative ninety. Add those together; those go away. You get negative five y and negative ten y equals two. Plug that back into this equation, this equation, this equation this equation doesn't matter right it has to solve all of them and you get this point here is 12 comma 2 and that's the one that ends up being our solution as we saw from the solver but in this case we don't really know that but we have three points to check and those three points plug them into your cost function and you'll see that this one minimizes gives you 680 this one here gives you 750 and this one here gives you 800 Okay, and that's the graphical method. Uh, the Excel solver is really easy once you learn how to type everything in. That's the hardest part. So if you want to learn it, it will help you for you know, doing multiple ones of these. If you just have to do one or two, it's probably not worth the hassle.